Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with yet another, believe it or not, Stravinsky box. Oh, my God. It's the 50th, 50th anniversary of his death, and these Stravinsky boxes are coming fast and furious. And the truth is, most people do Stravinsky rather well. The music is kind of designed to go rather well. That is, it doesn't require a lot of interpretive noodling. And so for today's conductors who don't have a lot of ideas, even with things that do require interpretive noodling, they're usually pretty good with Stravinsky. I mean, they really are because, because they can just sit there and beat time. And quite frequently, the music will come out very, very well. But here we have someone who is much, much more than that. I'm talking about Ricardo Chailly, who is not a, a, an idiot, and he's not a conductor with no ideas, and he's very skilled, and he had the Deutsche Symphony Orchestra of Berlin, and he had the Concertgebouw, yes, one of the 10 great orchestras in the universe. So that was really wonderful. And so a lot of what's in here is going to be fabulous, but there are some misses and very interesting they are. I cannot wait to chat with you about them. So first of all, how many discs is this? That's 11 CDs. Now, Stravinsky was not a prolix composer. His music is not terribly long. Not that it's Webern, who we've just discovered, but it's usually, usually pretty concise. So you can get a lot of Stravinsky on 11 CDs. And it's quite interesting to see what's in here. Let's just first start with the technicalities. The technicalities are a little bit awkward because ha, yet again, a major label has managed to come up with a packaging that is, shall we say, awkward, awkward. Now, you look at this, you think, oh, it's a normal, it's a normal box where you just sort of open up one side and it pops out. Wrong you'd be. It is not one of those. What is it? What is it with these people? I don't know. Why did they do this? This is a, it's a, you have to hold both sides of it like this and flip it off. I mean, or if you can get your, your hands around it, if you can stretch and grip, you know, it'll drop out this way. But if you do that, you'll press the sides together so much that it won't, it won't fall at all. It's just, it's, why can't they just do the normal flip it open and take the discs out? And then when you have done that, you see that everything is perfectly, perfectly packaged to the point where it can be difficult to remove. You know what I mean? So we get a booklet. All right. So the booklet is very booklety and it doesn't tell you what's on uh, the discs. You have no, no track listings. That's on the discs. But you do get texts and English translations, which is a very, very nice thing to have. I will say that. So there you go. Um, what we do, right? Yeah, we do. Okay, yeah, that's good. So that's that. There's the book. Now we get to the discs. Let's see if we can get them out of here. They fall out rather well until you get to the Rake's Progress. Discs 10 and 11, see them in there? Everything else just slides out, but the discs 10 and 11 are attached to each other. It's a gatefold or whatever you call it. And because it's a gatefold, you have to get both sides to be stochastically balanced in order for them to get loose. So if you, if you twist this thing and shake it, you can get like one half of it to come out and then you can, there, we got it. Now everything is out of the freaking box and we can talk about these discs one at a time. So without further ado, let us begin with the Shai Stravinsky box. Not the most conveniently packaged set of discs, people at DECA. All right. Disc one, you get, let's see, Fawns and Shepherds, which is very cute, Fawns and Shepherds, those early songs. I love Fawns and Shepherds. Uh, Feu d'artifice, twice, fireworks twice. The Chant Funèbre, that's that early piece that they discovered recently and just performed, and it's just boring as hell and totally uninteresting. And the Scherzo Fantastique, and you get, let's see, what else is this? Oh, I love the way they do this. You get King of the Stars, 
Now, get get the way they do this for some of the for the Russian pieces, because you know how the French pieces they sometimes call the writers for the Sacre du Printemps because it was originally given in French. So, so yes. So here we have we have this thing in original Russian. All of the original Russian pieces are given their original Russian names, which is a problem if you don't read Cyrillic. Of course, of course, it actually, they then do a little teeny, teeny, tiny transliteration. There it is in print, which is so small that you need an electron microscope in order to read it. Now, of course, I happen to think that King of the Stars is wonderful in, in Russian. It's, it's, uh, I love, I mean, one of my, my little, little pastimes was studying Russian. And so, I mean, really took it, taking Russian lessons. I mean, I speak Russian. So, so I, I can read Cyrillic and it's, 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 let's see what this is. Of course, I can't see it, even though it's, it's, it's Zvezdoliki. That's what it looks like. Yes, Zvezdoliki. That's King of the Stars. And if I didn't pronounce it correctly, screw you. I don't want to know, but I think that's what it is. And, and let's see, it's just, it's just, I love it. It's such a cool piece. So these are all very nice performances, but the performances with the Lucerne Festival Orchestra, which are the later ones, are distinctly less interesting where they are duplicated than the earlier ones. For example, Feu d'Artifice, Artifice Fireworks, which is only here called Feu d'Artifice. It's not called anything in any other language. Um, for so it's a little inconsistent here. Um, sounds better with the either. Let's see, who's it? The radio? Uh, uh, no, no, that's that. The Kachekabal. No, the first one is with, or the second one. Wait a minute, let me get to it. Nine is that's it. Okay, yeah, it's with the uh, Radio Symphony Orchestra Berlin, and it's just better than the Lucerne Festival Orchestra. And I have to say something about that, but we'll say that in a minute in another context. So that's disc one. Disc two, ah, Le Sacre du Printemps. Isn't that cool? And they don't give the Russian title, which they really should. I don't understand this. And then we get Renard, a very good performance of Renard with Philip Langridge, Neil Jenkins, uh, Derek Hammond, uh, Derek Hammond, uh, Stroud, sorry about that, Robert Lloyd, and the London Sinfonietta. And then we have the Chant du Rossignol with the Radio Symphony Orchestra Berlin. Also very, very good. This is a nice disc, except the Rite of Spring. The Rite of Spring with the Lucerne Festival Orchestra. Now, let's have a little chat about the Lucerne Festival Orchestra, shall we? Here is the reality. The Lucerne Festival Orchestra bills itself as, you know, having all the world's greatest players in it. It's a pickup orchestra. It will always be a pickup orchestra. It's a very good pickup orchestra. I mean, today's players are amazingly trained. But remember when Claudio Abbado was doing Mahler and other stuff with them, and it just, just wasn't very good. Everybody was raving. Raving in Europe, particularly, ah, the Lucerne Festival. They are not a world-class ensemble. They aren't. They are a pickup orchestra. A bunch of great first desk players does not a great ensemble make. A great orchestra is an orchestra that has a cohesive, cooperative concept of sonority, which has been produced over thousands of years of intense work together. And the Lucerne Festival Orchestra is not one of those. Not at all. Now, Shai recorded two Rites of Spring. This one with the Lucerne Festival and his original one with the Cleveland Orchestra, which is a fantastic Fantastic. One of the reference recordings of the work. More exciting than poor Pierre Boulez and better recorded. And the bottom line is, you know, in the notes here, Shai says he's very naive. He's very sweet. I, you know, he actually is. He's an extremely, extremely humble and, and pleasant person. And he says, oh, I'm so happy that I was able to do the Rite of Spring in Lucerne. But some people have told me that they still enjoy my earlier recording. Yes, because it's about 10 times better. And if you are a Classics Today insider, then I will have this review posted there um, and you can hear a direct comparison between the two. And the difference is just so obvious. I mean, it's not, it's, it's silly. So this is a so-so right of spring. 
I, I also reviewed it on Classics Today when it came out with the sound clips there. You can hear them there. I, it, it's just silly. Silly, silly, and sad. There's no reason to redo it. No reason to redo it with the Lucerne Festival Orchestra and do it less well. And that's the reality. Oh, well, the truth hurts. Disc three. Ah, we get Le Chant de Rossignol again, this time with the Concertgebouw. Before it's with the, it was with what, the Deutsche Symphony Orchestra Berlin? Is that who was doing it? Or was it with Lucerne? No, 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 no. It's with the Radio Symphony Orchestra Berlin. Berlin Radio Symphony Orchestra. Okay, whatever they're called. It's the radio, the Deutsche, the whatever. I don't know. Okay, so this one, the Chante Rossignol, is with the Concertgebouw, and it's even better. It's wonderful. And then we get the Stuart de Soldat with the London Sinfonietta, the Octoot, the Octet, and the Two Suites small orchestra. The first andante in the first suite was one of our world's most beautiful melodies. So these are lovely performances. It's first class all the way through. Um, the least part soldat, by the way, is the suite. Yes, it's the suite. It's not the whole thing with the soldat. No. Okay. That's that. Next, disc four. Dumbarton Oaks, the tango, Ragtime Danse Concertante, which is nice to have because you don't see those very often, and the Divertimento from The Fairy's Kiss, all with the London Sinfonietta, and all very nicely done, as you might expect. And here we have, oh, the complete Pulcinella with the voices, with the Concertgebouw. This is one of the wonderful ones. It really is. It runs, it runs the Abato, which is my reference recording, the one on DG with the London Symphony. That's I think tops, but this is just about as good, and it's really, really well done. And you get the Symphony of Psalms with the Radio Symphony Orchestra of Berlin, and Jeu de Carte. I love Jeu de Carte. I know I said that before. It gets such, you know, because it's funny. It's really funny, especially like the third deal where where Rossini's William Tell Overture morphs into Beethoven's Fifth and back and forth and you know da 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 da. da. Oh, it's, it's hilarious and a wonderfully enjoyable ballet, witty and fun to listen to. And people don't really seem to think much of it, but I think it's a great work. I really, really do. And the Symphony of Psalms here is very well sung, nice performance. This is a good disc, but the Pulcinella is really lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, disc six, ah. The Violin Concerto with Alexander Kor and the Concertgebouw, a good performance, naturally. It's it's quite fine. Um, not something that, you know, there's so many great recordings of the Violin Concerto. Is it competitive? Actually, yes, it is. It's, it's just very, it's very good. However, the Oedipus Rex is problematic. That's the big number here. Oedipus Rex. First of all, as they point out here, the narration is performed in the language of the audience, as was Stravinsky's intention. Well, yes. And in this case, the language of the audience happened to be Dutch, because this is a live recording receiving its first release. And, oh, it's just not very good. First of all, the sound is not great. It lacks impact. It really does. Second of all, you know, Oedipus Rex is, you know, Stravinsky was, you know, famously wanted to divorce his music from interpretation of any kind, to make it conductor proof, which it kind of was because he did a pretty good job with it. And he was a, not a very good conductor quite often. Although Shai says Stravinsky was a fantastic conductor in his own music. And sometimes he was. That's true. I, that's true as long as it wasn't too complicated. But, but really, 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 you write a piece like Oedipus Rex, and no matter how conductor-proof you try and make it, you still got to have singers. And they still got to sing. And that's always a problem. You can't eliminate the human element unless you eliminate the human element, particularly singers. So who are the singers? The singers are Robert Dean Smith. He's a pretty good Oedipus. He really is. The trouble with, with Oedipi is that they tend to get... It, the part is written in a rather whiny, whiny part of the tenor register. And Oedipus does a lot of whining in the piece. I mean, that's what he basically does. He whines and complains. So it's hard not to sound whiny, but, but this is a good Oedipus. Now, as, as, as Creon, 
you have, and a few other things in the messenger and whatever, you have, let's see, Yuha, Yuha Usitalo. And Yuha, is it Usi Usitalo? Yeah, Usitalo is really, really good. He's a very good Creon. So that was a good thing. But Yocasta, oh, Yocasta is Valtraut Meyer. Now, Valtraut Meyer, frankly, never had a lovely voice. And at this point, it was really starting to go. She has a, a wobbly voice at most parts of her register. She's got a few good notes sort of in the middle when she's not pushing. But otherwise, she tends to fluctuate um, unacceptably. And in the quick duet with Oedipus, you know, the one, the one, you know, after the, after the oracula, 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 you know, that thing. You know, then they then there's then there's the trivium 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 that that thing with the duet all the chorus is going trivium trivium you know, the three paths and it's in you know Latin and she comes in you know they do this really fast almost patter song duet and she comes in with like you can't even make out the notes that she's singing you just can't I mean the voice has no no, 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 no focus at that speed. And then, of course, you know, Robert Dean Smith comes in. He's much better than she is. So as, as, as far as Oedipi go, I, I'm not listening to this one again. There's no need. There's just no need. But boy, Walt Trout, I'm so sorry. She really should retire. She's, she's had it. I mean, she should have retired by the time she did that. It was not good. Okay. Next, we get the Firebird. This is really good. This is that long 1945 suite, the big one. Uh, really, really beautifully done because this is with the Concerto And the Tango and Petrushka. Petrushka is also with the Concerto The Tango is with the Gavant House Orchestra, that fabulous tango band. I just love hearing the Gavant Houses, Housers do tangos. It's what they were born to do, clearly. But this is a great Petrushka, too. It really is. And, and these are wonderful performances. So nothing to complain about there. Even the tango's fun. Maybe a little stiff. I don't know. It's all right. Four Norwegian Moods and the Rite of Spring. This is just that disc that he did with the Cleveland Orchestra. And that Rite of Spring is great. Spectacular. And spectacularly well recorded. Oh, it sounds so much better than the Lucerne Festival one. It's just fantastic. Fantastic. So it's really good. I'm glad they included it. I really am. They should have done both, and they did. Oh, now we get Apanon Musagette. This is a beautiful performance. This is all with the Concerto Bell. It's one of the great Apalons, if you like that piece. And then Agon, also first class. Great playing. Wonderful, sympathetic conducting. He keeps it moving. Shahi's got rhythm. It's terrific. Absolutely terrific. And then discs 10 and 11. Here they are, the ones that wouldn't come out of the box easily. This is, of course, the Rake's Progress. And it features Stafford Dean, Catherine Pope, Philip Langridge, Sam Raimi, and Mother as Mother Goose, my favorite of all, Astrid Varnai. Astrid Varnai was great in all these roles because she always had an ugly voice to begin with, even when she was a great Brunhild of the voice or Ortrude. And, you know, she, she graduated. She did a Kostelnitschka and Yenefitz on Maito, if you haven't seen it. She sort of had one way to do insanity, you know, as, you know, as, as for example, Kostelnitschka, when she did, when she did Clytemnestra in the, in the Boom um, Electra video, she kind of does this and she looks around and makes her eyeballs go and then she starts to go like, oh, 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 oh. It's great. I loved her. And uh, so she's in here too. It's awfully nice that she's in here. This is a really good race progress. I'm wasting a lot of time. It's with the London Sinfonietta. It's very, very nicely done. The cast is terrific and it sounds very rakey. And so that is the Shai Stravinsky box. That's the whole thing. Most of it is very good, but there are two outstanding bits of mediocrity. The live Oedipus Rex with the Dutch narration, and not because the narration's in Dutch. I mean, you know, you can always listen to Dutch. It's perfectly fine. But th that and the first 
rite of spring with the Lucerne Festival, which is totally wholly unnecessary. Happily, there's a great rite of spring, so we can't be too disappointed. And would you get this box? Should you get this box? Well, it depends on whether or not you have the original LP issues of this stuff. Um, if you don't, this is one heck of a very, very fine and very representative assortment of Stravinsky, because at least you get agon. I mean, you don't, you don't, you wind up with ag on your face. Get it? Ha ha. No. Uh, you know, nobody wants to do Stravinsky's late stuff, which is really a shame because, okay, I can understand leaving out Thraney. You know, Thraney is one of those pieces that's sort of like, uh -huh. you know, tenor and bassoons screaming in atonal Latin. I, I get it. No one needs that. But the Requiem Canticles are really cool. Canticum Sacrum is pretty good. You know, there's some really good late Stravinsky. And I, I do wish these things would be included. But who knows how many boxes are still to come in this Stravinsky year? It could be billions of them. And there could be some people who do all the late stuff. So we'll see. We'll have to see. In the meantime, Shai does great Stravinsky. He really, really does. And so for 11 CDs, and, you know, if the price is right, again, and you have the Bernstein box, and you get one of those other big, big Gazunta boxes, this is pretty good. It's really, really, really good. And you can buy it with confidence. Keep on listening, folks. Thank you for joining me. Take care.